Hey everybody, it's the Bald Man once again. Uh, this time I'm going to be going over an FRQ, a practice FRQ before your test. And uh, it would behoove you to pay special attention because your test FRQ is going to be formatted very similarly. All right, so let's go through this. <clears throat> Number one says, assume the economy of, econ of Amazonia has an actual unemployment rate of 8% and an actual unemployment rate of 5% and a current rate of inflation of 5%. Using the numerical numbers given above, draw and correctly label, uh, draw a correctly labeled graph of the short run and long run Phillips curve. Label the short run Phillips, uh, I'm sorry, label the short run equilibrium point as Z and plot the numerical values above on the graph. All right, so it's asking me to create a Phillips curve graph, which is easy enough. So let's start with the Phillips curve graph. Inflation rate, unemployment rate, our LRPC. And this is where we need to start being very careful, because if you remember, the instructions gave us very specific numbers, right? It did say that the natural rate of unemployment is 5%, so I need to use that, but the actual unemployment rate right now is 8%, and our inflation rate is 5%. All right, so let's plug that in, right? The NRU would be 5%. Our SRPC would be here. Point Z who happens to be somewhere along here. And we said our current inflation rate was 5% and the current unemployment rate was 8%. This is how we would demonstrate that on this graph. Now let's go back and continue. It says identify a fiscal policy option that could be used to reduce unemployment rate in the short run. All right. Uh, since we are in a recession, we would have to do expansionary fiscal policy and we could either increase government spending or decrease taxes. Remember, we just need one, uh, so pick one or the other. This, either one of these answers is acceptable. So we're going to increase government spending or decrease taxes. Then this, uh, C says, draw a correctly labeled graph of the aggregate demand, aggregate supply, long-run aggregate supply, and show the impact of the fiscal policy option on uh, fiscal policy option on price level and real GDP on the graph. All right, so we're going to go back and we're going to draw a aggregate demand, aggregate supply graph based on this, right? So C, let's do our ADAS graph. Remember, we were in a recession. Now, the fiscal policy option is increase uh, government spending or decrease taxes. Either one will lead to an increase in aggregate demand and an increase in price level, uh, which would bring us back to full employment, we think, right? So let's go back and continue this. All right, it says, D, suppose the country's MPC is 0.8 and the real equilibrium output is 500 billion and the equilibrium output is 600 billion. Uh, calculate the minimum change and direction of the change in government spending needed to shift aggregate demand curve to bring us to equilibrium. All right, so if our MPC, hang on, let me make sure that was D, yes it is. All right, so D, if the MPC is equal to 0.8, that means my multiplier is gonna be one over 0.2, because remember, MPC plus MPS has to equal 1. And this is actually 1 over 1 fifth, which means my multiplier is going to be 5. I have a budget 
uh, I mean, I'm sorry, a budget, yeah, I guess a budget deficit of $100 billion. How much do I need to increase uh, spending by to close that $100 billion gap? Well, I'm going to take the $100 billion, I'm going to divide that by 5, and my answer is 20. But the correct answer is increase spending by... 20 billion dollars in order to close the gap. E says draw and label a loanable funds graph showing the impact of the expansionary fiscal policy on real interest rates. All right, so let's draw a loanable funds graph. And the government is going to have to borrow money, right, to spend it, since they don't they don't have enough. We call that deficit spending, and that's going to drive up real interest rates. We're almost done here. Let's find out. And the last question is, what will be the impact of the change in real interest rates on aggregate demand? Explain. So, because real interest rates went up, what is going to happen to I do believe the question is aggregate demand right what's going to be the impact of the change in real interest rates on aggregate demand explain so aggregate demand will decrease because higher real interest rates make borrowing money less affordable and gross business investment and consumer spending will both decrease uh, shifting aggregate demand to the left if you have any questions about this graph uh, send me a message on remind or make a comment down below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can